right, welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com and today we're going to talk about how to composite a car photo. Take a photo of a car, maybe it's something that you saw in a parking lot somewhere, maybe not this kind of car exactly, but hey, who knows where you live. And make it, well, move it from that parking lot to some other scene where it's going to look a little bit more, you know, spruced up and jazzed up. Now, before we jump into this and talk about all these different techniques and some of the cool things you can do, I want to let you guys know I'm selling a course on how to retouch images over on tutvid.com, my website. There's a little video card that just appeared in this video player. You can click on that and check it out. Um, yeah, just go check it out. Let's get on with the tutorial, though. So we're going to cover cutting the car out, creating the shadow, um, you know, some of the color grading stuff, uh, changing the reflection on the windshield. We're using a car that is actually going to be a little bit easier to composite because it has more of a matte paint finish. Therefore, the uh, the background that we're cutting it out of, it's just not really picking up and, and reflecting all of this stuff around it. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. But we'll talk about, you know, the windows and how we kind of clone and clean up some of that stuff. There's a lot of stuff to be done, um, and it, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Let's jump right into it, though, and uh, get to work on this. So one of the first things that you want to do when you're looking to composite a car photo is you need to find the right background. You need to find the right car image. You can't just go and throw, you know, a car image like this, right, where you can see the, the horizon line is very low, and maybe take it and try to mix it up with an image where the horizon is, you know, way up here. Um, the, the angles are never going to look right. It's going to look very, very strange. Uh, another thing is you want the angle of the car to look right. Right, okay, so you can see here the road is sloping or turning relatively sharply here, uh, and, and the car works just perfectly. If the car is, I mean, here we've got this Lamborghini, we would obviously need to flip this car, but this car is probably showing a little bit too much of the side, and it wouldn't quite look right on this road. Maybe it would, I don't know, maybe a little adjusting would be needed. Point is, a lot of times you want a shot that shows some of the side of the car, but not too much of the side of the car. Um, it all depends on what you're going for, though. I know, for me, for what we're doing in this project, I wanted a photo of a car that showed a reasonable amount of the side and a lot of the front of the car. Um, the easier composites are definitely the ones where you see more of the front of the car and less of the side of the car, unless you the only thing you see is like a side profile shot of the car. That's pretty easy to go in and line up because you pretty much just have to rotate it, make sure it's it's straight. That's very important. I know I'm just talking here, but getting the angle of the background correct and the angle of the car correct it really helps things a lot. So I found a photo that would work as my background where the road was turning enough. And actually, you'll see we even turned the road a little bit more using some perspective warp and things like that. Um, we're going to cover all of that in a little bit. But do not sleep on the fact that you want a great photo of a car. And that that is everything from, you can see in this photo, the photographer was standing up a little bit higher because the horizon line is higher. And we're sort of looking down at this Lamborghini. Whereas this Audi... The horizon line is very low, indicating that the camera position itself was pretty low, and the photographer was almost shooting up at the car. And you can see the, the lens height for this photo would have been somewhere around that front headlight um, as far as, you know, where the camera was, you know, as far as, you know, I don't know what, 12, 18 inches off the ground max. So picking a right, uh, picking a great car photo, excuse me, is imperative, especially if you don't have control over shooting the photo. We're going to talk about all this stuff. So let's work with our supercar image here. And obviously the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and cut it out. So I'm going to do this by using the pen tool. Now this is not a, a pen tool tutorial, but I will give you a couple little pointers. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on the car. I like to pick a point where there's a pretty clean uh, meeting of lines. And what I mean by that is like, I don't want to start down here where it's just a very gentle, you know, you can almost barely tell the difference between this hub coming right into the tire. It's just almost a gentle slope. Whereas something like back here, right here where these two points meet, it's a nice sharp line. So if I begin building my path this way around the car, when I meet up, it's going to be a definitive point where the path comes together personal preference thing. Uh, the other thing is I'm going to set my pen tool to draw a path and I'm also going to make sure that I've, I have it set to combine shapes. Uh, that's just the way that I'm, I'm building this. Now I think I already have this cut out so I'm going to delete this old work path just so we can begin working with a new work path and I can kind of explain my way through this. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to begin by clicking right here. And this all just, you know, the more you use the pen tool, uh, the better you're going to be at using the pen tool. And I'm going to click one more time here. And then I'm going to click and I'm going to pull here and line my pen, my that path up. By the way, you can see where the path is going. If you click on your little settings and tick on rubber band, super useful feature.
So now that we have our path, we're ready to convert the path to a selection and move this car from this image to our other image. If you select the work path and you have the whole thing selected, if you really want to make sure you have the whole thing selected, grab the path selection tool and just hover over the whole shebang. Or you can just command or control click the path right there in the paths panel, which by the way is located window paths. Let's go back to the layers panel here. Uh, we can go ahead and grab our move tool and just drag this car image up and drop it down onto our background image. Let me find my background. Oh, there it is, car BG, right. All right, so let's just drag this image, hold it on the tab, drop it into our image. All right, so you can see here, while the image in this photo it looks like, hey, wow, that's going to work with our road really well, you can see when we bring it in, the, the car is a, a bit large, number one, but also it definitely looks a little out of place unless we were to sort of have it drifting coming around this corner. It probably shouldn't be on that slant. Now, if you go and you start adjusting the perspective of the actual car itself, the whole car starts to look pretty funky. So if I go Commander Control T and I say, hey, perspective, I'm going to try to drop the perspective back that way. And of course, it, it kind of funkifies things up front. But then I can right click and choose, you know, scale. And I can just try to re-straighten things out. And then I can right click and go free transform. And I can maybe rotate the car a little bit. That brings it a lot more, it, it really kind of, you know, brings things together a little bit. Um, maybe we need to go distort and just kind of like somehow crunch down the front of this car to make it look not so fat and weird, but then that's going to start to bring it, well, that's not too, too bad. So I can commit that change and it looks okay, but if I undo, if I undo the transform, you can see just how much uh, the car has changed. So instead of having to do that kind of huge wholesale change to the car, what if we change the background? So I'm going to shut the car layer off and let's take a look at adjusting the perspective of the background image. Number one, let's go in and get rid of some junk that we don't want right here. And I don't care if this is destructive editing. This is just very quick and dirty stuff. I'm grabbing the spot healing brush and I'm going to set it to content aware. Uh, if you don't have spot healing, go ahead and use the clone stamp tool, whatever, anything works. With the spot healing brush, you can just quickly paint over objects and boom. Boom, they're gone. So I'll probably take away the cat's eyes here in the road. Um, there is this little funky looking oil spill or I don't know what the heck it is. So I'm just going to just draw a little selection around it. Now the reason I'm drawing a selection around it is because it butts up against the white line. And I don't want that white line to sort of get a funky halo. You can see we still got a little bit of halo. That's because the selection is a little bit too close. We're picking up some of that white from the line. So choose, I switched over to my marquee tool and just use my arrow keys. Nudge the whole selection away from the lines a little bit. Hit the letter J to bring up that uh, healing brush again. Let's try this one more time. All right, so a little bit better. We still have some kind of funky something there. So let's just grab the clone stamp tool and we'll just finish this off with just a quick uh, Shazam from the good old old reliable clone stamp tool. Great, so we got rid of that little thing and any other little stuff that you see that's kind of out of the ordinary that you don't like, feel free to change it now because what we're going to do is we're actually going to widen this entire image. So in order to uh, get this road to kind of be, let me create a new layer here and I'm going to bring up the brush tool. Let me just kind of show you what, what's going through my mind here. Get uh, like a, a nice electric blue. So what we need to do here is, I'm just going to turn on shape dynamics because I'm picky. Don't worry, guys. Sorry about this. All righty. So what I'm thinking is this road, instead of coming this way, it really needs to turn this way a bit more. So if we stretch the image side to side, what's going to happen is this part of the road here is going to be pulled upward this way, which is going to, which is going to take the road and bend it more like this, which by the way, is going to make it fit with our car quite a bit more. You can see if the road is kind of going on that angle, that's actually almost exactly what we need. So that's great. All right, I'm going to get rid of that layer. Let's start making uh, some changes. So first and foremost, we're going to go image canvas size, and we're going to expand the width of uh, this canvas. So I'm going to say width. Let's make you, instead of 4,200, let's make you straight 5,200. And I'm going to change the anchor point over here to the far left because I want the image to be pushed out toward the right. Hit OK, and you'll see. Boom, it pushed it out to the right. All right, let's select our background layer and go edit free transform right there. Now, with Free Transform, we can just grab this anchor point and stretch the entire image. 
depending on the landscape, you can stretch an image more or less. It really just depends on what you have. If we have a bunch of small trees here, if we stretch it this much, things are really going to start looking weird. Now, I happen to know that in a future tutorial, we're going to take this image and we're going to blur most of the foreground because we're going to make it look like this car is speeding down the road. So a lot of these kind of details that might look blurred uh, or might look stretched, excuse me, are going to be blurred and having a little bit of stretch in them really is not going to hurt that much. So I really don't mind doing it here. All right, I'm going to commit this change. We've widened the image. Um, already the car is closer to fitting uh, or fitting where it should be in the road, but we still want to make some difference or some changes, excuse me, and we're going to do that with perspective warp. We're going to have some fun with perspective warp. We're going to go edit perspective warp. Actually, before we do that, we should right click on this layer and just convert it to a smart object because it's always great to lock in an image at kind of a larger size before you start doing things that are going to be degrading to its value. So edit uh, perspective warp, not puppet warp, perspective warp, and we're going to draw a a nice little grid. Let's just drag a grid out onto uh, our photo here, and I'm going to drag this point over here, and let's see, like this point here. I'm just going to try to sort of pull that off to the horizon over there, like so. All right, this is going to come through here, and this guy's going to ride through here. What we need to be careful is if we make huge changes to the road um, along the edges of our grid that we build here, uh, we're going to have noticeable lines that we'll probably need to go hit with the healing brush. So that's just something to keep in mind. All right, I'm going to drop this in over here. I need to zoom out a little bit more and move that point over a little bit more. And I'm going to move this point over here out to really just really stretch the living daylights out of that. All right, I'm going to drag out a new grid. When you see the blue up here, it means it's going to click together. That's great. It's going to give us another plane of perspective. That's cool. Let's go ahead and just, it's just all very rough stuff. We're just kind of running and gunning, so to speak. All right, there we go. We're going to do another perspective plane on this side. All right, something kind of like this. All right, and you can see how I have it slightly, uh, sort of slightly tilted upward toward the road. Um, again, this is all just, you know, personal taste. The more you play around with the images this way, the more you're going to realize, oh, you know what, I should actually move this like over here and have that a little wider in the center. Maybe this should be boosted up a little bit more on the edge. A bunch of things like that. You're just going to, you'll see it and you'll understand um, that, that things need to change. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. All right, once we've set the layout of our grid, uh, which this is not a perfect grid by, by any stretch of the imagination, but it's, it's the principle that matters here. We're going to switch to warp mode. Now, once we're in warp mode, we can zoom out and we can begin playing with any of these handles and really tweaking the, the perspective of our image. You can see if I move too much, you can see how the lines in the road really just get messed up bad. So I'm going to hit command or control uh, Z to undo that. And you can see here, like with this line here, I actually want to push this in because it's going to make the road turn more. That's great. Um, then I'm going to try to bump this over to help set these lines back up the way they should be lined up. You see that? I'm trying to make sure those lines are staying somewhat the way they should be. Let's try pushing this in a little bit, maybe. Nope, that's not really going to do much for us. Let's undo that. I don't want to waste my time with that. Let's pull this over even more like that. Cool. And again, we'll get this guy over here adjusted. Something like that. Let's try tweaking the front side, like so. I think this might need to be bumped, brought up a little bit, right? Something like that. Cool. So we're flattening the road out. We're definitely turning the road a little bit. Let's see what it looks like. Let's just go ahead and commit this change. Um, and you can see we've definitely just flattened, overall flattened the image a lot. We can open up this layer here and just shut off perspective warp, turn it back on. So there it is before, there it is after. If we turn the car on, Let's see. It's much, much closer. Look at how close that is to being, you know, almost perfectly straight along the edge of the car. So that's great. Now when we get over to here, things are still a little messed up. We can further tweak this whole thing uh, using free transform and warp. We can do that. We will need to fill in here this bit of asphalt up near the top. We need to fix that. But maybe what I can do is command or control T and just extend the image. I'll just literally will drag it straight up just to try to fill the sky a little bit. Again, I'm not super concerned about stretching things a little bit. We're going to end up downsizing the whole image and also we have all that blurring that's going to be going on. All right, we have some lines in the road that need to be corrected and of course all this macadam here. Uh, with this macadam, with this asphalt, let's, um, let's try doing a little content aware fill. Now we're going to sort of 
make all those changes that we made in perspective warp. We're going to make them stick um, by rasterizing this layer. Again, we're just we're just going with what works here. Let's grab the lasso tool and drag a selection over this corner. This is pretty big for content aware fill, but let's see what happens. Edit fill content aware fill. Hit OK. See what it does. I have a feeling there's going to be some lines and just some messiness. Yeah, you can see that over there. Uh, let's deselect that, and we're going to just use the clone stamp tool. Hello. Clone stamp tool. A little bit too big there. Let's try that again. There we go. Great. We just get that moved over. Let's get rid of that little mark. Let's bring the uh, the grass and dirt and all that over. See, that looks pretty good. We, we made that meet up the way it's supposed to. It's still not perfect, but I'm going to stop fussing with it. You can kind of see what I'm doing going in and, and playing with it and adjusting it like that. All right, so let's talk about getting the car in place, tweaking the shadow of the car, and making sure the perspective of the car is right. Whoop, wrong, wrong layer. So we've got the car here. Let's create the shadow for the car, and then we're going to go ahead and worry about getting it in place. Where do we put it in the image? And we're going to talk about some cool perspective stuff when we do that. So let's create a new layer. The new layer is going to be above for now. And what I'm going to do is I will grab, you can grab the pen tool or you could, if you have a steady hand, use the lasso tool or the polygonal lasso tool. In fact, you know what, let's use the polygonal lasso tool because, uh, because we can. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start back here, right by the wheel, and I'm going to draw out a selection a little bit outside of where the natural shadow for the car was when we cut it out. So right there to the front wheel. And then I'm going to bump it out just a little bit here as I go around the front of the car. All right, just like so. Cool. Again, we don't need to worry about anything back there. Come right through back here, right? Remember, we had that, that, that action going on. Actually, I'm going to bring this up like so. Boom. All right, so we have a nice selection. With this selection, we can do a few things. We can feather the selection, which I don't think I want to do. I think I want to blur it because I can I can create a smart filter. So let's do that. Let's uh, fill this with black. So edit fill, and we'll just choose to fill this with black. All right, great. So we've got technically or theoretically our new shadow. Commander Control D to deselect. I'm going to name this layer uh, Car Shadow. And I can drag this beneath the car, okay? And then I'm going to right click on this layer and choose Convert to Smart Object. Now that it's a smart object, I can go Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Actually, sometimes I like to hit it with a little motion blur first. So blur, motion blur, and I will roughly set the angle to kind of whatever the angle of the car is. I just find that it gives a nice little shifty front to back uh, blur. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, you know, depending on the size of the image, anywhere from 50 to 250 pixels on the distance. Do what looks good. It's still a relatively subtle effect. Hit OK. And our shadow does not look perfect. Don't worry. We're going we're gonna to continue working on this. And then we're going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we'll blur it probably about 10 pixels. You don't want to blur it too much. If you blur it too much, it really starts to destroy the integrity of the shadow. The shadow should still be somewhat uh, hard-edged because it is so close to uh, the body of the car. The car rides low to the ground. So we want to increase it a little bit, but not too much. I'm going to go with somewhere in 9.3. Whatever, that's fine. All right, so now that we've done that, you can see that we still have a little bit of, like, you know, the original shadow, and we're seeing lightness on the edges. So we need to apply a mask to our car. Now, before we do that, we're going to convert our car to a smart object. So I'm just going to name it car, right-click on the layer, choose convert to smart object. Great. Now we're going to go layer, layer mask, reveal all. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to grab my brush tool. So I'm going to just make sure my opacity is set to 100%. And I'll choose uh, from my brush drop down menu here. I'll choose, I don't know, like 100, yeah, 100 pixel. Yeah, 100 pixel soft edged brush. That's fine. Close up my, uh, my brushes panel. Zoom out just a little bit. I'm painting with the color black. You know, I'll right click. Maybe I need to make it just a touch bigger. Maybe between 100, 150, 200. Yeah, something like that. All right, and we're just going to gently paint over uh, the edge of the old shadow that you see, right? So we're just going to sort of fade these shadows together. Whoops, I started painting over the car. Don't want to do that. Let's go in here and just kind of paint that edge away to mesh the old shadow with the new and get rid of any uh, semblance of that, that strange, funky, bad-looking highlight, which we really don't like. You can see we really have it showing up uh, back there on the back of that tire, which just looks bad because we don't have that light. So we need to go ahead and get rid of that to make it all just blend together and, you know, look 
somewhat natural. We probably don't have enough shadow out here underneath this tire, so we're going to go down to the car shadow layer, double click on that to get into the smart object. I know this is my tire over here. Remember, it's going to be blurred. Let's just go ahead with the brush tool. Uh, we're going to paint with the color black. Let's create a new layer in case we really mess things up. We're working in the smart object here. I'm going to right click, make my brush quite a bit larger. Whoop, that's way too big. Yeah, something like that's probably good. And we're just going to paint a couple, a couple little dots here along this back area just to kind of deepen up that shadow back where I know that tire is. Tire kind of runs all along here, doesn't it? So we're just going to kind of add, add, add. And then we'll just save the smart object, Command or Control S, and then Command or Control W to close the smart object. And sure enough, we got a little bit more shadow there. In fact, enough now that I can see we have to go and mask the very bottom of the tire away. So back up to the car layer, select that mask. Let's make our brush tool a little bit smaller. Paint away just a little bit of that tire. Zoom out a little bit. Uh, the shadow doesn't quite extend far enough. We're going to roll with the way it is now, though. I like it. I'm going to reduce the opacity of my shadow just a tiny bit, like down to like 95, 96, 97, or, uh, you know, well, 93. There we are. That looks good enough. We don't want to go too low. It'll look really bad if you go too low. But you can see we have a nice shadow here underneath the car, and you can always adjust the opacity a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on what your image calls for. Let's talk about perspective. So perspective is super duper important. Without perspective, your image is never going to look right. Let's group this car photo and its shadow together. So I'm going to select the car shadow, hold down my shift key, select the car layer, and hit command or control G to group them together. I'm going to name this supercar because I don't really know what brand car this is. Let me rewrite that because I misspelled it supercar. All right, we can, we can just convert this to a smart object straight up by right clicking on it and hitting convert to smart object, or we can leave it as a layer group. I'll probably just leave it as a layer group for now just just because if we take this uh, this layer and we have two smart objects and the beauty of having two smart objects is commander control T it's gonna say it's gonna shut off the smart filters I don't care we size this way down and make it tiny right and we put it in place and we're like yeah that looks great and then we realize no that doesn't look all that great commander control T ignore that it's just tell, talking to me about filters we can size it back up to the way it was and the car is not going to be all blurry. So it's preserving uh, all of that original image detail. Now, let me just undo that. Let's say the car is way up here. You can see the car, I mean, it looks like a matchbox toy, right? When it's this close to the camera position. But if we move it all the way back here, it's starting to look like a car that kind of sort of belongs on the road, right? Maybe it's a little bit too small still. But if we size it up a little bit... Maybe it starts to look like a car that actually uh, would be sitting there on the road. So that has to do with sizing, but we also need to talk about perspective. And this all has to do with perspective as well. So let's make the car a little bit bigger, just to give you guys an example. And we're going to kind of test run this perspective adjustment that I'm about to do on, uh, on another image. And we'll have some fun with it. So here's what I like to do. When you have a car image where the car is facing off to camera right, so the car is driving right or left to right across the scene, you need to extend your background image out to the left. So we're once more going to go image, canvas size. This time we're going to anchor over here, so we're pushing all of our space to the left. And I'm going to set the width to about... 500 percent and maybe for this image i'll go like 350 percent of my original width so hit okay and you're going to see we're going to get a bunch of transparency off to the left in fact the image is pretty large at this point let's go image image size just downsize the whole shoot and match maybe set the size to like 1680 all right that's going to shave a few pixels off and make it a little bit faster for us to work with what we're working on and we still have a decent sized image. Uh, all right, so we're working with this. The first thing we want to do is determine where the horizon line is in our background. Remember when I, we very first started this tutorial, <laughs> quite, a quite a while ago at this point, I was talking about the horizon line in these two images where you can see the horizon's very low here and the horizon's high here. Um, and then the horizon for this image is actually kind of difficult to determine, but it's probably right around here. Uh, the, the camera is slightly pointing down, so you know it's going to be up above the midpoint of the image. So the horizon is probably realistically somewhere right around here if I had to take, you know, a, an educated guess, if you will. Let's go back to the background. With this particular background, it's very easy to see where the, uh, where the horizon is because it's just right there. It's right there. So what we're going to do is we are going to grab the line tool. I'm going to give it a fill of, let's go with blue because blue is easy to see. Um, and I'm going to set the weight to 5 pixels. The, I'm setting the fill to blue, by the way, not the stroke. Weight of 5 pixels is fine. You know what? I'm going to take it up to 10 pixels just so it's a little easier to see. All right, I'm going to drag this across, hold down the shift key. By the way, you can see I'm making a shape layer. 
right? Shape layer. All right, so I've got a blue line here. Whoop, my mistake. I've got a blue line here where the horizon is. I'm actually going to just, you know, kind of drop it down to where the horizon actually looks like it is, right about there. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kill the stroke on that just so we have a straight blue line because I'm, I'm picky like that. All right, now I'm going to turn the supercar layer on. What we need to do is determine where sort of the vanishing point of this car is. We're going to do that. Uh, by drawing a straight line, we, we don't really have any straight lines on the car, but we do have points between which a line should be straight. And those points would be the bottom of the front and back wheel and also the top of the front and back wheel. This is one of my favorite ways to do this. Um, it's, it, it's, I'm sure it's not a scientific method, but hey, it works for me. So here's what we're going to do. You can see the top of my stroke. I'm holding down my space bar, by the way, when I need to move the shape that I'm drawing. All right. So I can line it up with like the front wheel, but it's not lined up with the back wheel. Then when I drag it up to line it up with the back wheel, it doesn't line up with the front wheel. So I need to move the whole thing down a little bit. All right. Bring it back to the back wheel. Move it down a little bit more. Bring it to the back wheel. That's pretty close to being right. All right. We're going to drag this line way out over here. There we go. So we've got our bottom line. Let's zoom in and make sure that that looks about right. It's close. Uh, it's not quite perfect. Let's let's just tilt it a little bit to make sure we get it right. I'm going to hit Command or Control T. I'm going to rotate the whole thing just a little bit. Use my arrow keys to nudge it down. Let's make sure. There we go. You can see it's riding right by the bottom of our hubcaps. All right, commit that change. I'm going to zoom back out. Now let's create our line that would run across the top of the wheels. So grab the line tool again. Um, I like to be zoomed out for this, despite not being able to really see the top of the wheels as clearly as I would like to be able to see them. I want to be able to really drag out a very long line to find out where these lines meet one another. Something like so. That looks like that's a right point right about there. Let's drag this out further. There we go. So you can see I actually didn't drag this. This first line is not nearly as far as it needs to be. So I'm just going to delete it real quick and just create a new line. So let's just go through this again once more. There we go. Something like so. And let's make sure it's lined up over there on the wheels. I'm looking at the wheels. Okay, cool. And you can see our lines finally intersect way over here. Okay, let's just zoom in, make sure we're close to the wheels where we should be. Yep, everything looks pretty good. All right, so here's the trick. Once you have these lines, the point at which these two lines intersect is also where these two lines ought to intersect your horizon line. How do we make that work? Well, here's what we have to do. I'm going to drag the horizon line down beneath the supercar just so we don't accidentally select it. All right, you can see that's our horizon. In fact, I'll just name the layer H so we know that's our horizon line. I'm going to select the supercar layer group and both of those shape layers above it and hit Command or Control T. It's going to give me the same rigmarole about smart filters. I don't care about that. I am now just going to drag this whole thing to the point at which everything meets up there on the horizon line or, or roughly meets up on the horizon line. So now, in theory, this car is at the proper perspective. And in fact, you can see it really looks like it belongs. The only issue is it's too small. How do we adjust sizing? Well, you want to adjust sizing from your vanishing point. So this means we drag our center point here in free transform and drop it on our vanishing point and hold down shift and alt. This would be shift and option on the Mac and you scale the car larger that way. You can see the car obviously is moving off screen, but because uh, because of where we are, we need to keep the car kind of in line so we can only move the car side to side this way, all right? So we actually want to scale the car down a little bit just so it's somewhat on our screen, and we'll go ahead and move this over, and you can see that we barely have room with this image to see the car. So what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if we have any uh, additional image or any additional background that is out kind of over here that we stretch. Because remember we did a bunch of stretching and stuff. Make Commander Control T. In fact, we do have a bunch of stuff. So let's see if we can open this image up. I'm going to increase the canvas size. Image, canvas size, and let's push the image out this way. Uh, I don't know, another uh, 1,000 pixels or something. So let's go 11. Uh, 11,800 and push it out that way, hit OK. All right, great. So we've got more image, um, but in fact, we don't really have that that much image. So we will be cutting off some of this stuff. We'll cut it back to like here once we're finished uh, editing this image entirely. So at this point, we can, if, if we absolutely need to move this car back, we can adjust the perspective of our image a little bit so we can sort of lower the horizon line, which would, or I'm sorry, raise the horizon line, which would allow us to. 
oops, what did I do there? Undo that, which would allow me to move my car back to, let's say, right about here, all right? And if you know, for instance, you absolutely want the car to be there, uh, there's a few things that we can do. We can go ahead and we can adjust the background once more. So we use Commander Control T. We could just straight up, uh, whoop, hold on. We need to adjust our horizon line first, grab the horizon line, move it straight up because right there is where we want our new horizon to be to really make this image work. We can go Commander Control T. We can just straight up lift the entire image, right? Kind of something like that. And you can see how the car now just fades nicely into where it's supposed to sit. Technically, probably not the best thing to do. Um, but again, we're pushing and pulling the background with the thought in mind that this whole background will end up being blurred later on down the road. All right, let's hide our aligns and everything like that. And you can see the car is hanging out there. The car can be moved straight side to side and you're not going to mess with the perspective. So I can just hold down my shift key and drag and drag the car straight side to side. And theoretically, uh, it's going to look great kind of anywhere uh, we put it on the road. What I think I'm going to do, though, is I want to make the car a little bit smaller and move it back on the road a little bit. So I'm going to grab supercar and I'm going to grab the two horizon lines coming out of it. Command or control T. All right, I don't care, Photoshop. Move the anchor point back. Hold down Shift and Alt. That'd be Shift and Option. Size the car down just, uh, just a wee bit. Commit that change. And then I'm going to drag this stuff over. So the car kind of sits right about there. All right, now I will shut off these additional lines. All right, at this point, we can, I mean, obviously you can have your image wide. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to grab my crop tool. And I'm going to crop this stuff in. All right, kind of like this. In fact, maybe I'll give a little bit more sky to my image like that because we've been stretching the image upward. And then I'm going to drag this back here. And this is going to allow me to get rid of some of that messy gravel. Again, I would do it a little bit differently if I was doing this for a client image or something like that. But you can see here now we have our car composited into our scene. And at this point, uh, you know, some of what I would do is just go ahead and drag some different uh, color balance layers and things like that onto, uh, onto my image. And this actually, I'm going to drag it into here and I'm just going to clip it to the car, right? So I'm just influencing the car, throwing some green into there. And then what I'm doing here is I'm reducing the contrast and intensifying the mid-tone highlights or the, the I'm sorry, the mid-tone tonal punch of the image with these adjustment layers. Oh, and you know what? Before I let you go, I'm just going to drag these. I'm actually going to group them. Commander Control G and I'm going to call these uh, lines. One of the things that we still need to do to the car is correct the, the old windshield. So the windshield, what you want to do is get a selection of the entire windshield. Uh, in theory, you can go over it with the clone stamp tool and get rid of all of this stuff. The way I would do that is shut off any adjustment layers, create a new layer uh, above. We can create a new layer above the car. And what we'll do, I'm going to, I'm going to, what do I want to do here with this? I'm going to leave this. I'm going to unclip the color balance layer and I'm going to unclip that layer. All right. So what I'm going to do here is this layer, I'm going to call it, you know what? I'm just going to call it glass because I don't want to misspell something and it's late at night. All right. Glass. How do you like the way that works? All right. And what I'll do, grab my clone stamp tool and go current and below. This way we're cloning on this current layer. And you can just begin going around the glass, alter option to sample, and, you know, begin painting over it. And just cleaning up the glass to get rid of reflection of things like these. These are probably just power lines, you know what I mean? Stuff that we don't really uh, have out here on this country road. So you would go over your entire windshield like this and just quickly clone away everything that you could and make your windshield look nice and smooth. The glass on the sides is actually pretty smooth. It could be cleaned up a little bit more. Um, but really the, the glass on the windshield is really where all the, uh, where all the, all the cleaning up needs to happen. You can see, you can just go through, clean all this stuff up. It's relatively quick. If you want to do a nice job, you want to spend a little bit more time than I'm spending doing it, but it's doable. It's all, whoops. It's really not that difficult. It's just a matter of, you know, clicking, painting and cloning everything together. There I set my clone stamp tool to an opacity of 50% that just attempt to sort of blend that area together a little bit more. So you can see we just kind of smoothed that area of the windshield out. You could do the rest for the rest of those power lines. All right, so what we would do next is, by the way, we can just clip the, that that cloning to the car layer beneath. And that way when we go ahead and clip the, the, uh, the color balance layer, it's going to clip to the entire car as well. That's all fine and dandy. Uh, let's talk about bringing the sky onto the car now. Um, and actually, this brings me back to the layer group. I'm going to shut off that uh, color balance adjustment layer again, and I'm also going to or unclip it again. I'm going to create a new layer, and we, we can call this layer clouds uh, because we're going to be grabbing some clouds from our actual sky and bringing them into this layer. So I'm going to go back to my background layer, grab the rectangular marquee tool right up here, 
and just grab a, a big chunk of the clouds like that. Command or Control C, go up to the clouds layer, Command or Control V, paste them in place. So now we've got additional clouds up here. We're going to grab these clouds and drag them right down over the car, but we need to flip them over. So Command or Control T, right click, choose Flip Vertical. One of the things I also like to do is kind of mess with the clouds a little bit. So I'll probably skew these and just skew them a little bit this way so it's kind of going along with the car. Maybe right click again, choose Perspective, and widen them a little bit that way. Right Again, it's just, it's just subtle stuff. Uh, I'm going to shut the clouds layer off real quick though because what we're going to do is enter into quick mask mode. So right down here we have quick mask mode. We're going to enter into quick mask mode, grab our brush, and what I'll do is I'll quickly paint over the window areas uh, on, on basically the areas that I want the clouds to go. So you can see I can just quickly paint over these window areas. Uh, you can really select the windows however you like. You can, you know, you can select them using the pen tool. You can select them using rectangular, uh, well, not rectangular marquee. I'm sorry, the uh, the rectangular lasso tool, the the, uh, the polygonal lasso. That's what I'm, that's what I'm searching for. All right, so just quickly paint over all this stuff. Again, I would be a, a lot more precise if this was, you know, a client image or something like that. You know, take your time for for your clients. Your clients are treasure, and we all love our clients so much. At least most of us do. All right, so I'm going to zoom out, and then I would just do the letter Q, and it's going to load that as a selection. I'll turn the clouds layer back on, and I can just go layer, layer mask, reveal selection. So it gets rid of all the clouds everywhere else, and then we can select the actual clouds layer thumbnail here and set it to a blend mode of, you know, overlay. Uh, overlay might be a little bit too intense, maybe soft light, something like that. So there's before, there's after. We're just getting the subtle clouds from the sky being cast into the glass portions of this car. Turn on the color balance adjustment layer once more, um, and let me continue dragging over different color and adjustment layers. So here, what I have is uh, this levels adjustment layer is just killing off contrast, and then this channel mixer, mixer adjustment layer is set to monochrome, so it's just making a black and white image. But then I've set it to the blend mode of multiply, so it's it's dumping in contrast, but also giving us this really cool like mid-tone lift. Uh, we also have a couple more adjustment layers here. Whoop, didn't want to do that. Want to grab the move tool, drag them up, drop them into place. And basically we have more contrast adjustments, a uh, an exclusion fil photo filter, which is just, it's just changing the, the highlight and shadow colors a little bit. And then a soft light gradient uh, map with just kind of this taupey green leading to like a, I don't know, a tannish beigeish yellow color. And overall, it's giving us this effect. So it took a little bit of time, but mainly because we we're explaining it all. But it's really important. And, and the one big takeaway I would love for you to have from this tutorial is that image perspective uh, idea with your, your horizontal line, uh, your horizon line, I should say, and the lines coming off of the object which you're compositing. This technique works if you're compositing people into an image, cars, buildings, any kind of object. One of the main things that you're going to see people have difficulty with is getting the perspective right. And this is the way you can get your perspective right 10 out of 10 times. Um, and all you have to worry about is getting the size right and making the size look correct. So that's it for compositing a car image in Photoshop and going over all the crazy technical details and watching me cut out the entire thing and everything else that has to do with compositing a car. So for compositing a car into a new photo in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutfeed.com. I'll catch you in the next one. Maybe Shakespeare's Hamlet was really meant to be a story about miniature pigs. Pretty crazy, huh? Go ahead and hit that little like button now that we're friends. You know what I'm saying? Also, subscribe to my channel. There's nothing quite like it out there on the web, and I think you'll like what's to come. You can also sign up for the Tutvid.com newsletter by using the link here in the video, and I'll send you 30 free time-saving features and tips in Photoshop that you are just gonna love. And then of course, social media. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram, Twitter and Snapchat and everything. I got links down in the description to this video. Shakespeare's Hamlet, huh? Shakespeare's Hamlet. Little miniature pigs.